Welcome everyone. I think we should get started, Sora. What do you think? Definitely. I think we have a lot to cover. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Rachel Antrobus. I am um, from Wested, and I'm joined with my colleague, Sorrel. So I don't know how to pronounce your last name. Steelstra. Steelstra. Wow, yeah. all this time. <laughs> Sorry about that, Sorrel. Um, from, from Growing Inland Achievement. And um, we're here to talk through a few tools that we've developed um, to help support your guided pathways and how um, how equity can be at the center of your designs. Um, so we want to start quickly with this question. Um, what you think, uh, what do you think are the top degrees and certificates completed in the IE? And we're gonna use this tool, poll feature. We have about 23 people, so let's try it because we wanna use it again. I don't know if you've, you've used this one before, but essentially um, you go to your phone, if you can hand, um, or you can go to your uh, desktop. Um, it, if you use your desktop, you use this uh, poll ev.com slash Wested, it'll take you to the poll or you can text Wested um, to this number as, as though this was the phone number. And then you're gonna answer the question um, by A, B, C, or D. Do you think it's arts and humanities, business, health, social behavioral sciences, or STEM? So grab your phone real quick and text Wested to 37607 and then answer by the letter that you think corresponds with the, with the majors that you think are most um, completed in the IE. You could also put it in the chat if you don't want to um, uh, get to your phone. We're going to use this this feature one more time. So if you could do it now, and we'll be ready for the next use. Okay. So we said there's someone else said C. Two people said health that are not on here. Okay. Great. Thank you for that. We'll get back to that question in just a moment. Um, I have to exit here. So it was uh, social science, social behavioral sciences, if I if I remember correctly. I'm sorry, I wasn't multitasking here. Um, but let's look at business. This is another a top one that you all said. So um, this is a, a snapshot that we created at WestEd um, to give you all an idea about what the program's um, starting occupations and skills were uh, to help be a starting place for for um, guided pathways designs. You can use it in meta major design. We'll talk a little bit more about the uses. Um, but here's a snapshot of what the meta major and business and the IE, this is regional uh, labor market information that we had available about what's available. So here are the programs that are available generally in the IE colleges, including a bachelor's degree level. The starting uh, middle skill jobs, those that are, don't require an AA um, are around, you can get as high as $29,000. Um, and the top salary here is a financial manager. These are the top jobs that were posted in the IE um, according to the MZ data that we pulled. The other, the other innovation we had here was the skills that are common across those, per, um, those occupations as a way for folks to understand what are in uh, high demand in terms of the labor market. Um, I'm gonna hand up, let's see. So we're gonna do um, a quick overview for the session, but read along. We basically, um, Sorrel and I were really inspired by a CCRC paper that was released back in June, um, unpacking program enrollments and completions with equity in mind, and wondered what it would be like if we uh, help support the IE with some data tools to help you answer the questions that they outline in, in the paper. Um, and we're going to follow this almost exact uh, to the T with um, some slight variation that we're going to talk to Chafee about some of their work that they've done it um, around interdisciplinary studies. Um, but we're going to follow these qu questions and we also have a, um, a guide for you all to follow this back at your colleges when you get back to your campuses um, so you can replicate the conversation. So a quick um, technical note or two, it, we have a very, very um, tight timeline. So um, we apologize in advance because we would more than anything love to talk with you about what's going on in your colleges. Um, but given our timeline, we're going to try to get through all the tools and 
hopefully we have some um, conversation at the end that can help us uh, understand where y'all are coming from a little bit more deeply. But in it, um, in lieu of that, we ask that you could uh, re rename yourself. If you are familiar, you go to the three dots in the corner next to your video and rename yourself with your um, agency. So I would go up to my three dots and I would rename myself Rachel Antrobus um, from West Ed. So that we can uh, know where y'all are coming from as we as we talk today. Let me hand it to you, Sorrel. Yep. Good. There. Hopefully, you guys. Whoops. Can see my screen here, and um, we just wanted to situate the rest of the conversation. You know squarely with guided pathways and, and ask the question, you know, what does it mean to begin with the end in mind? Um, we know our students come to us to learn skills that lead to better jobs, perhaps more education, um, in short, economic and social opportunity and mobility. How do we know if it's working? Um, we feel like a useful first step is to know what folks are actually studying. So, what programs are IE students currently earning degrees and certificates in? As Rachel mentioned, we built a tool and here's a screenshot of the tool that you all will get to play with in just a couple of minutes. Um, but these are degrees and certificates completed in the IE um, over the past five years as reported to iPads. Um, and you can see that the lighter gray colors on the left represent business, social and behavioral sciences, health professions, um, and so on. Um, but the dark blue represent the interdisciplinary and liberal studies degrees. And this really stands out um, as by far the biggest area of completions. And just to let you know, this holds true for AA degrees, certificates, and it's the case at all colleges in the region except for one. Um, and what this means and what specific topics of study are included will vary you know, from college to college. And later when you play with the tool yourselves, you can see how the areas of study are classified in this tool. But um, we, you know, we wanna give you a chance to kind of look, at, look around at that, um, but also a caveat that you know, we're not implying that liberal arts programs are not useful. You know, shout out to my husband who teaches Greek and Latin and my daughter who double majors in English and music, but, Rather, we think it's important to unpack this category further in order to ensure that the programs within it are intentional and that the, 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 the learning is scaffolded for students in ways that result in knowledge and connections to pathways to, to better their futures. And we're really lucky today to be joined by some friends at Chafee, Angela Burkerick, and I think Melissa's here also. Um, Sakun Fong from Chafee, who have recently been thinking through some of these questions, and they have graciously agreed to share some of the questions and strategies that they've used um, to try to make sense of their interdisciplinary studies degrees and how to meet both the needs of their students seeking immediate employment, as well as those who are looking to transfer. Thank you, Sorrel. Yeah, we really wanted to explore um, for the students that earn these um, interdis our interdisciplinary studies degrees, we really wanted to explore, are, is there a better option? Are there better options? And so going back to that idea of designing with the end in mind and kind of thinking about the students kind of educational goals as a focus. So first, you know, if students are looking for immediate employment, um, are, is there a better option for them? What can we offer them besides um, perhaps an interdisciplinary studies degrees? And so just very quickly, our academic and career communities that I refer to, those are our meta majors. And that's what we're just calling them a chafee. And what we're doing now starting in the fall is um, students, even exploring students will be immediately um, picking an academic and career community to belong to. And so just kind of thinking, these are our thought processes about how we could use that sorting process to know which academic and career community um, and what their career interests are, helps us guide them into perhaps degrees in that community that have the empl highest employability outcomes in the area, right? We wanna um, get them towards that living wage, thriving wage. 
And then also using uh, the tool that you'll see a little bit later uh, to look at these top employability skills by these meta majors. And that helps us kind of perhaps channel students into um, degrees that will build those skills in that area of interest that they are showing. And so next slide. We also, um, our counselors share that they use um, our degrees a lot to facilitate transfer. And so we really wanted to do kind of this gap analysis and ask counselors, okay, what specifically are students, um, are you using these interdisciplinary degrees to help students transfer to where and in what areas? And also um, we can look at the data and what the data tells us about that in um, for bachelor's degree earners that got only an interdisciplinary study degree, what um, bachelor's degrees are they earning? And then we can look for perhaps better options or it can help highlight obstacles in some of our existing degrees. And so just kind of to share some of those possible solutions is if there is an ADT that we don't have, that's kind of an, that would address that gap, we could look towards get, getting that degree and designing that degree. Um, we can identify, like we found that our top degree earners in these interdisciplinary were psychology. They ended up getting bachelor's degrees in psychology. And so we really wanted to interrogate, well, why aren't they getting our psychology degree? And so it identified some really interesting obstacles. So um, like one was a scheduling and we weren't offering enough sections of a very important um, statistics prerequisite to a different course that was required. So just really wanting to kind of look at what those obstacles are. And then there will maybe an option where we design a new local degree to address that gap. For example, we have, in addition to the associate degree for transfer in biology, we have a local degree that facilitates transfer to the UC much better than the ADT does. And so just really wanted to kind of go back to that. What is that end goal, as Cyril said, design with the end in mind? And is there something more intentional we can do with, the, um, with our existing degrees other than interdisciplinary studies? Thank you, Angela. Um, so I bet there's going to be a lot of questions, but we are really trying to go fast. So maybe if folks have questions, they can put them in the chat or if we can get time at the end, we will get to it. But we um, we want to also share with you, um, give you a chance to play with the tool that we've built. So we put in the chat um, a link to a Tableau um, tool and you can go ahead and play with it. What's you that? Give, you want to give them a bit of orientation, Sarah? Yeah, I am going to show folks the tool here. All right. So what we have here is a Tableau tool that shows um, an overview. This is what you saw a screenshot of earlier. You have all of the colleges on the right, so you could pick your college to play. You have race as a filter over here, gender, award level. And each of these tabs gives a different view. So if you look at completions by area of study, oops, then you have your computer take its time. Okay, so then we can see here across the IE, you know, what are people studying? Again, we see that the, the largest is interdisciplinary and liberal studies. Um, and that you know, business, social and behavioral sciences and health professions are the next three. And then within this little box here, a closer look, you can see within interdisciplinary, what are the specific kinds of degrees that are in there? And we see, you know, some are humanities, humanistic studies, liberal arts and sciences, biological and physical sciences, and then the multi and interdisciplinary degrees. And if you play later, you'll also be able to look you know, at the crosswalk, you can see how we came up with um, all of the um, categories, but we want to give you a chance to um, to play around a little bit. Rachel, do you have a timer going? I do. As soon as you, I screen share, I'll, I'll project it. Um, okay. And if you want to share this, the questions are all, but yeah. I, I just want to re reinforce and, and remind folks that we have some discussion questions. We will help guide both the the, um, the exploration you do today, but also back at your colleges. 
we don't expect you in, in the three minutes we're going to give you to be able to answer any of these in, in depth, in detail. But um, the idea is that you have some tools to go back and um, unpack it a bit. All right. I stopped sharing there for a bit. So, um, and, and so will you remind folks which tabs you're, we're focused on on this question? Right, so we were looking at the completions um, by area of study and, whoops, and just having people take a look at what are the top areas um, at your college that you're interested in looking at. Okay, so we'll give you three minutes. We're gonna come back together, poke around on that tool. If you're having any issues, just um, um, text us uh, or chat us rather, and we'll figure out how to get you what you need. Great. So Again, we're going to have a guide to follow up in case that this is way too fast for some of some of us. Um, this would definitely overwhelm me. Um, but uh, and Christine is asking about uh, hospitality, culinary, and commercial. There's there is a, a guide in terms of the um, the top codes and use the zip codes that were used um, to define the the program. So we'll, we can get that to you. Then the next you go into the information and resources, there's a description of where all the data came from and how we did it. There's also a crosswalk tab, which shows all the zip codes and how they were mapped to the meta majors. And it's a little bit, it's a lot. So feel free to email me if you have more questions. So the next question we wanted to consider um, is this one around what opportunities do those degrees lead to in terms of further education or immediate jobs, prospects and earnings? Um, and we um, wanted to introduce one tool that West said has created. There's a lot of different ways to address this question, but really we're looking for like what what are the what are the starting wages that are available at which degrees and programs. Um, and so in order to answer that question, um, West has created a tool that um, we are are posting on our website that I'll show you how to find it. Um, that we know that that uh, colleges like. Chafee have used to try to under undergird and understand what the programs are that they have and, and they're particularly using the skills um, content of the tool. Um, but we know that since students, their end goal is really a job, whether they transfer or otherwise, we wanted to kind of get more labor market information in the hands of our college partners. So um, this is our best attempt. Um, it basically connects the labor market in information with the um, pathways that are available at the program level, you can customize and make your own um, your own maps, essentially. We call it the Opportunity Map Builder, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna share it with you. Um, if you could put it in the chat, actually, Sorrel, would you mind doing that? Um, while I show you where to find it on the website, because we are, um, it's it, although it's a standalone, we um, are hoping that folks um, can access it this way. We have other tools on this website to help support that tool. You can find it through our our, um, our new project website at WestEd and scroll down to the Community College and Higher Ed um, tab and go to Web Tool. And when you click on the Resources tab on the on the left column, you're going to get to that tool, which is a, a Google Studios based tool. Um, so since we said social behavioral sciences, I'll show you what that looks like for Chafee. Um, like I said, you can customize this data. Um, depending on what you want to look at. You can look at it at an individual program level or you can cluster the programs. We, we uh, made some um, C, um, generic meta majors in the CSU meta majors for those that don't have um, pathways set up at your college yet. But let's take a look at Chafee. Where are you Chafee? There you are. You can check just your college on that filter. You can now customize your top codes to uh, multiple programs or single programs. I'm going to go over here and look at the social behavioral sciences since we're curious about that. So when you click on the meta majors, it'll change a couple different tabs on the on the um, mapper. It'll go down. If you go down here, it'll show us the top educational um, offerings. Right now, it's for the whole state. So for the IE, we, we just want to look to see if other programs are available and what they are at the other colleges. So that's here. This is using the this is all Koki data at the top here. Um, and then if you keep scrolling down the tool, it'll show you the, the uh, top occupations. Again, it's set for the whole state. So we're gonna look at um, the IE. 
It'll tell us um, the, the annual openings that are available and the entry level wage and what level of education it requires. You can, you can select for that too, if you wanna see what um, uh, middle um, jobs are, middle skilled jobs are. Uh, this is a good example of a program that doesn't have a lot of middle skilled jobs available um, in that sector. So one of the reasons why we created this was to be able to demonstrate and show students and counselors and, and faculty um, that there are some majors that really only um, line up with the labor market if they go to a bachelor's degree or above. And this is one of those, um, those areas. The other um, feature that we added is a, a skill area. Uh, common skills are those that are aggregated across multiple um, jobs that are um, considered more like 21st century skills. And technical skills are the ones that show up um, that are more more highly specialized. Um, social and behavioral sciences is, is a pretty bad example with technical skills because of how broad they are. Um, and so colleges so far are using these in different kind of ways. We are hoping um, at any moment of in the next month or so um, to update this this data tool to include more um, MZ data. So you can have a little bit better data because we did find that we use the MZ data for the static maps that I showed you earlier. And there's some really good quality um, data in there with the skills. The other feature I just want to mention is these um, these are all hyperlinked to ONET. So if you're curious about what does what a detective and criminal investigator do, which is in the social behavioral sciences, um, you click on that. It shows you the ONET page of all the skills and, and resources, um, uh, deeper resources about to understand that, that occupation in particular. So we're going to give you the same time um, um, to play around with this one. And here are a few questions that guide that conversation um, or the thinking that you might have now and, and back when you get to the campus. Focus on this first one, which are the programs that lead to more or less opportunity in terms of immediate job prospects, earnings and transfer outcomes. So the way we want you to try to understand this question is what which um, of the programs that you're selecting, you can do a meta major that you think is common, you can go to the one that you found in, in the IE business is the number two program completer, um, according to the data. And you can see which ones are paying uh, uh, starting wages that are above um, mid, uh, low opportunity would be considered $14 an hour, a middle opportunity would be like a $20 an hour um, wage and um, 26 and above is, is considered a higher wage. So if you want to use that lens and um, check out the the opportunity map builder, play with it a bit, and we'll get back together in just a few. If you want to unmute yourself or put your um, put some responses in the chat at your college, what do you think are the high opportunity programs? What what would you consider high opportunity and um, in, in the tool, is it helping you to understand what that might be? Again, we know it's a lot to learn the tools, play with them, uh, make conclusions about it. It's really to whet your appetite or sort of um, just start the exploration process. But if you do see anything, shout it out. And just sort of a reminder to um, you know, why the number three, we had number one, which is what are people studying? Just sort of trying to understand the lay of the land. What are people completing um, their degrees and certificates in? Then the next question really, and, and what, what kinds of opportunities are those um, completions associated with? And then the third question that we wanted to look at is, is student representation proportionate? So if we know that some opportunities if you greater opportunities are associated with certain kinds of programs and degrees than others, are, is it equitable in terms of who's receiving benefits to those? So again, we want to play. Can I take over the screen sharing, Rachel? Yes. Okay. And we'll go back here. Okay. So we're going to be looking at patterns by race and seeing um, if anything strikes you at your college. And what I'd like to do is just walk you through a little bit. So first, looking at this by race and ethnicity tab, we can see that within each racial category that what the most common areas of study are. And I think, you know, as we've been saying, one thing that really jumps out about the IE overall is that the proportion of students completing interdisciplinary degrees is high across all racial ethnic groups. As we scroll down, we can see that that's a big one. Um, 
but there is some variability in, in within the interdisciplinary and also other programs. So we could see, for example, that um, just under 5% of Asian students complete degrees in social and behavioral sciences, whereas slightly more than 11% of native um, Hawaiian and Pacific Islander students do. So there, there is variability to be seen. And then if you look over one more tab to the program of study tab, you'll see three important pieces of information here to help you evaluate whether student completions in different meta majors are proportionate across groups. So just to briefly walk you through it, and I'm assuming you guys are playing as we talk, um, I hope. Um, so first you would select your college along the right and there are racial ethnic fil group fil student filters. And again, gender and award level, we're not really messing with gender for this one just because we don't have much time. Um, but if you look at the blue bar, um, you can see like we could, we could look at Chafee for example you could see what the overall student enrollment over the five years from iPads for black or African-American students, they were 8.4% of all enrolled students. They were, the orange bar can tell you completion. So they were 7.1% of completions. And then if you look across the gray bars, you can see whether black students are over or underrepresented. And just a quick tip, any this, this black vertical line will help you. Anything to the left suggests an you know, an underrepresentation relative to their proportion at the, at the school, and to the right is an overrepresentation. So curious um, what kinds of patterns you guys are finding as you explore at your schools. So if you want to go back to your, to the tableau and check that out, um, we'd love to have a conversation um, that last question, Sorrel, maybe the, the next slide. The patterns in over and under representation. Just the last one, I think, um, is what I'm the next question on the next slide. Oh, all right. Where are we here? Oh. Because ultimately we're focused on this question, right? Like, so if you're, as you're seeing, there's to dig into this data would take a lot more time, we know. Um, but if there are things that are popping up on the, the tool that um, GIA built. Um, so you can see where their proportionality might be out of whack, right? So a lot of times I know with my experience being at colleges um, that the DI conversation were um, separate from a lot of our, um, our programmatic conversations. Sometimes we don't even know um, which populations are um, proportionate to our, our overall college population. So this tool I think could really help support you all being aware of where there might be high opportunity programs where the proportion of students um, that actually represent your college are not there, um, which is what we wanted to get um, on the table. What we we're interested in about um, was how this is showing up in student experience and why, why and how does this happen? Because the reason why CCRC wrote this paper to begin with is how consistently across the, the, the nation we're seeing that um, BIPOC students particularly are being um, are not in the high opportunity programs. Why and, and where is that happening? Where in the college can we look more um, critically about what we're doing and how students are both advised, supported, and, um, and the kind of um, scaffolding that, that, that's created for students to actually keep continuing their education. Um, one of the original um, decision points we know that students have are how quickly they need to get a job. That's, that's um, one of the ones that we know will decide how much students will be pursuing the longer term programs. For instance, um, transferring in a, a STEM program takes upwards of three years, we know, um, to get to the actual transfer, um, which is a luxury some of us don't have available to, to, to take in our, um, our educational journey. So what, what's the, how do you um, think about this question? Where do you think that things are happening inside your college that um, that are uh, essentially sorting students by race and class. I, I guess I think it could be really useful in program review as mm -hmm. people being intentional and in programs and disciplines being very intentional, taking a look at this kind of data and being intentional about some of their planning efforts, specifically related to equity. Um, but yes, 
And Alex from Norco is saying that um, while our Hispanic students are overrepresented in hospitality, culinary, and commercial services, right? Um, we will have the, yes, thank you, Sorrel. Um, we, we wanted to, um, I'm not sure this is live actually. If you, we, you have a question about where you can share this information. We know that we have a lot and you're gonna, you're gonna learn a lot more um, in other sessions. We're gonna be sending you a discussion guide that'll help you walk through these tools again. Um, but where do you think this could land next? If we share the tool with you, where do you think you might be able to take it um, in a way that feels like it can move your equity conversations forward at your college? And in order to get the discussion guide, if you can click on that form and complete it for us, we will get you the, um, the guide uh, as soon as possible. Probably we're gonna do it by the end of the, the day today. So guided pathway, sorry, these are going so fast. Oh yeah, there's a lot going in there. <laughs> Counseling, curriculum design. Enrollment management, racial justice task force. These are great ideas. Career exploration. Okay. And um, Courtney's saying that I noticed that our African American students are overrepresented in the healthcare fields. That's really interesting. And I, I, I think what we, Academic Senate, what we talked about um, with these tools was really trying to, um, they're going to have to be contextualized to your college. Like when we asked Angela to come today, in part, it was that we know that interdisciplinary degree are very complex and they're, they're, um, they're deeply embedded inside of our colleges. They're not gonna be taken out anytime soon at any particular um, quick speed. But we wanna, um, in order to, to understand those um, conversations, we wanted the slides include Angela's um, tips and, and how she approached it, because we think that replicating some of those conversations about your, back at your college to really understand how interdisciplinary studies um, play a role in your, your um, program completions will be really important. Um, this is not a short game but one that we think is really important to, to achieving equity. We have a two minute warning here. Thank any you. Final, yeah, any final questions, comments, uses, anything that'll help us um, keep this tool going? And um, thanks, Tanisha. Thanks, Karen. Uh, yeah, so the final questions we're supposed to address, um, how has this improved the student experience? We hope it will just by being really intentional about understanding what students are studying and how those programs are useful to them. Um, and definitely with an eye toward equity, the proportionality, making sure that opportunities associated with what students are studying are, are, um, are not meeting only the needs of certain students. Um, what role did data play? Uh, well, we pulled data from iPads. That was helpful. And what else do we have here? Oh, student voice. It would be great to hear more, you know, to be informed, have these conversations informed by the student experience in terms of how they select, especially their programs. We know that that can um, not be done quite as, as we imagine with students' decision-making there. And we recommend that everybody try to integrate these ideas in their college campuses. I think we're gonna- Thank be... you so much for being here. Appreciate it. Thanks everybody.